Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N R. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving, we have been working on rather, on vocabulary words that you will find in chapter 3 of this book right here. The HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. As I said, we've been working on the vocabulary words, but if you need, if you happen to need help on the math portion of the exam, you will find that we have solved every single math problem that you will find in this book in our series of the math, math videos, HESI, day 1 through 50. Day 1 through 50, just type in HESI math, day 1, all the way up to number day 50, where you will find solution to, as I said, all the math problem in the event that you need help there. If you feel that you need a little bit more practice, some additional problems, you will find that the math on the T's is very comparable, very similar to what you will encounter on HESI, and there are 80 videos in that series, you may find some of those videos helpful as well. You will never know until you try out one or two. Let's get going. Today is our vocabulary lesson number 20. We are on page number 52. Page number 52, first word 101, and the word is over. It's an adjective. What does it mean? A word simply means out in the open. Out in the open. Not hidden. Not. Not hidden. Not secret. It means something that is in, something that is in, something that is in plain sight, something that is in plain sight, something that can be easily viewed, something that can be easily say, seen, is said to be overt. The antonym is, antonym of overt would be covert which we already learned, covert was our word number 80. Today is, we are on 101. We learned in 80 the word covert. Just give me one second here. I'm still here. I have not left the room. So the word is overt. Antonym is covert. These are adjectives. These are adjectives. If you want to convert, if you want to convert them into adverbs, it's very simple, very straightforward. The adverb of overt would be overtly. Adverb of covert would be covertly. Do you understand? Alright, let's carry on. Overtly. The next word we have is one hundred and two. The word is program e ter. It's a noun parameter. What is a parameter? A parameter is a constant. A parameter is a constant. A parameter is an upper limit. An upper limit of something. A boundary, if you like. A boundary. It is a limitation. It is a limitation. A boundary. We have to work. We we have to work within within the parameters of the blueprint. We have to work within the parameters of the blueprint. Whatever the blueprint sets the limit, 
we must stay within those limits. We cannot violate those limits. We cannot go outside. We have to work within the parameters of the blueprint. Or you might say, we have to work within the parameters, within the parameters, within the parameters set by the client. A client gives you a project, a client gives you work to do something and he sets a perimeter. He might tell you for example, he might tell you for example, let's look at three, three common parameters. Let's, let's look at three common parameters that, uh, that uh, one observes in the real life when uh, you give a project uh, to an architect or a builder you might tell him that the total cost total cost cannot be cannot be more than half a million dollars that's your first parameter that's your first limitation boundary that's your first parameter first limitation I want you to build this house but it better not cost more than five hundred thousand dollars better not cost more than five hundred thousand dollars it better not cost more than half a million dollars the most it can cost is half a million dollars is there any other perimeter? Yes, there is another perimeter. If there is another perimeter, I would like to have. I would like to have the total area. I would like to have the total area to be at least at least three thousand square feet. It must be at least three thousand square feet. No less than that. That's the minimum requirement we have. That's the second perimeter you must observe. You must adhere to. Is there any other perimeter? Yes, there is one more perimeter. Third perimeter is that it has to be done. It has to be done by December 31st. Among all the other perimeters that are set by the perimeters, these are the three most important ones, three most prominent ones. We must stay within the budget. We must provide the minimum square footage to the client demands and we must make sure that the product is delivered in a timely manner. The client insists that this whole thing must be over and done with by the end of the year, by December 31st. Let's move on then. The word was parameter. Plural of course is parameters. Now how you would go about using the term in the medical field it's your problem, not mine. 103. As he said, as he said, quite, what's the word I'm looking for? That means somebody who is very uh, sympathetically. There you go. Although sympathetic was not the word I was looking for. Somebody who is very concerned. This is a tricky word. I'm going to pronounce it slowly because I know that if I try to say it fast, I'm going to muck it up. Muck it up with an M, not an F. Pair Uck Ziz Um Paroxysm, paroxysm, I believe, paroxysm. It's a new word I had to learn myself. Paroxysm is a noun which simply means a sudden outburst of emotions. A sudden outburst of emotions. For example, a paroxysm of laughter one may have. One may have a paroxysm of laughter. In other words, a sudden outburst of laughter. It means a sudden or intense, a sudden or intense reappearance, something that had gone away. Did I spell reappearance correctly? something that had gone away and it appears again, it reappears suddenly a sudden reappearance of a disease of a disease 
or a condition or a condition a condition that was a condition that was dormant for a very long time all of a sudden it reappears and in that scenario the doctor would say that we have a paroxysm of it yeah, paroxysm I believe which is why which is why it's never a good idea to sit there and try to learn medical terminologies from a guy, a foreign guy that is, with an atrocious accent. You understand? I do not know why your mom did not warn you against it. But here you are, nonetheless. Paroxysmal Paroxysmal would be the adjective. Paroxys Paroxysmal is the adjective. Let's move on then. The next word we have is 104 and the word is Patent, which simply means, which is an adjective, which means simply means something that is, something that is open or obvious, something that is easy to see, something that is. Something that is easy to detect, something that is not hidden, something that is not hidden, something, something that is disclosed fully. Disclosed fully, and the word is patent. Here, we are using it as an adjective. Listen very carefully. As an adjective, if you're using the word as an adjective in this context, then in this context, the noun would be patency. But, but the word has other meaning. This is the first meaning as an adjective. The second meaning of the word has to do with the noun form of the word, when it appears as a noun. As a noun, of course you know what a patent, uh, patent is. Patent is a legal monopoly. A legal monopoly granted by a government, granted by a government for limited time period to an, an inventor. One more time, in the event that you have trouble with my handwriting, what is a patent? Uh, not patent, rather, patent. I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Patent is a legal monopoly that is granted by a government for a limited time. It's usually for a limited time. It is not given forever. Uh, it is not given in perpetuity. It is not given forever and ever. It is for a limited time, depending, I, I believe it's, uh, it's 18 years, but I'm not sure about it, 18 years or 30 years or whatever it may be. But it is usually for a limited time. The, a monopoly that is given, to, given by the government to the inventor as a reward for his invention, as a reward for his work. And during that time period, Nobody else can make it except this guy. Once that uh, that uh, patent expires, then of course it's a fair game. Do you understand? Let's move on. The next word is 105. And the word is...
dormant dormant which is an adjective what does it mean when we describe something as dormant dormant simply means that it is inactive something that is something that is inactive something that is something that is latent we learned this before we learned this word before we learned this word before let me just double check when we learned it number 89 this is 105 in 89 we learned this word latent which means it's not active it's sleeping it is sleeping it comes from the word comes from the French word dorm comes from French word dorm which simply means to sleep ou dorme you sleep nous dormons je dors and so on and so forth uh, which means to sleep, which is where the word dormitory is derived from. The word dormitory comes from the word dorm, which means to sleep, a place to sleep, dormitory, and hence dormant. If it's dormant, it's asleep, it's not active. It's asleep, it's not active, it's not doing anything, it's just lying there. It may become reactive later on, but not right now. Let's keep on going. The next word we have is, should I start, let's start from the top, 106, and the word is, path, path, a, Gen, gen, ek, pathogenic, 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 pathogenic. What does it mean? Pathogenic simply means something that is capable of causing disease. Something that is capable of causing disease or diseases if you like. For example, for example, you might say, you might say, for example, don't worry, don't worry, this particular this particular virus, this particular virus, or if you like, this particular virus, or if you like, bacteria is not, is not. It does not cause disease. It's not going to cause disease. It is. It is. It is quite. Innocuous. It is quite. Innocuous. Don't worry. This particular virus. Or this particular bacteria. Aha. Do you see a problem there? Did you catch something? Take a look at it. Don't worry, this particular virus, virus is fine, plural of virus is viruses, this particular virus, or if you like, this particular, because we are speaking in singular, you see, this particular, this don't worry, this particular one, this particular, not bacteria, bacteria is the plural, what's the singular of bacteria? Bacteria are more than one. 
this particular bacterium. If you're going to go in the medical field, these are some very basic things that you have to catch. It's not correct. This particular bacterium, this particular bacteria is not pathogenic. Don't worry about it. Assuming, of course, that I pronounce it correctly. Pathogenic, pathogenic. It's not pathogenic. It is quite innocuous, on the other hand. It is quite innocuous, as a matter of fact. Let's learn the word innocuous, shall we? It is quite innocuous. Number 107. It is not in the book, but let's learn it nonetheless. Let's learn it nonetheless. 107. The word is... E... Knock... You... Us. Innocuous. It's an adjective. What does it mean if we describe something as innocuous? Well, you can see from the context, you can gather from the context what it means. It means it's not harmful. It's not going to cause any harm. It doesn't, cause, it doesn't spread any disease. Don't worry about this particular bacterium. This particular bacterium is not pathogenic. It's quite innocuous. It's not harmful. It is not harmful. Innocuous means something that is not harmful. Something, something that has no adverse, something that has no adverse effects. Something that is harmless. Something that is harmless. It is not harmful. It is harmless. It is innocuous. It is innocent. Something that is, it can also mean innocent. Something that is innocent. Something that is innocent. An innocuous comment. An innocuous comment is a comment that is quite innocent. An, an, a comment that is quite meant to be quite innocent. It wasn't meant to be rude. It wasn't meant to be harm, hurtful or insulting. It was an innocuous comment. I don't know why she was so livid at me. I don't know. I don't know why. She was so livid at me. All I said to her is that she's looking pleasantly plump. Bye now.